This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Visit the podcasts page for show notes and links. Remember to like, share, and comment to help me grow. This is my fully operational Star Wars analysis episode 54. I'll be talking about analyzing the Bad Batch episode uh, 15 of season 1, which is called Return to Kamino. The episode analysis title is Who I Am. Bad Batch 15 aired originally August 6, 2021. The writer is Matt Michnovitz. The story editor is Matt Michnovitz. The director is Nathaniel Villanueva. And the score is done by the immutable Kevin Kiner. So, jumping right into the bad stuff. Omega's impatience and Echo's response really bothered me in this episode. In the beginning, you know, Hunter's been abducted. They're trying to go after him. And... Omega is so worked up that she won't even help to get the uh, the tool or the, the stuff that Echo needs to fix the ship and get it going again. Uh, I don't can't remember what kind of mar- um, damage the Marauder had sustained, but whatever had happened to it, it wasn't able to fly just yet, and he was trying to get it back up and running. And uh, I don't know. I, I get that this is a, a family sort of thing, but I wish he would have just told her, like, hey, sit down, be quiet. Or get me my tool so we can go save Hunter. And he kind of did that, but he kind of didn't. So uh, I didn't like that. I, I wish he would have come a little harder against her. I know she's a kid and she's just gone through a traumatic experience. But sometimes, I mean, especially with military uh, type training, you would think they'd be a little more business-like uh, in certain respects. But I don't know. Then again, I've never served. So <laughs> be interesting to hear a, a veteran uh, respond to something like that. Uh, what was good was the shootout in the training room. Uh the Star Destroyers, and the Ambion. So the shootout in the training room against those droids, it was a little silly that there were so many of them, uh, but it was really cool to see the Bad Batch working together again. Their theme coming up uh, felt really good, really impactful. Um, It almost felt nostalgic, and I only know their theme, I think, from Season 7 of The Clone Wars. Uh, So that was kind of surprising. And uh, just seeing the group all together working well and so well was nice. Um... It kind of makes the all the stuff that happens with um, Cross here at the end of the episode, or you know, as the episode's reaching its climax, emotional climax, uh, that much more interesting, that much more bittersweet, because he just doesn't want to work with these guys anymore. The shots of the Star Destroyers looked amazing. Uh, I believe those were full-on Star Destroyers and not um, Republic battle cruisers or battleships or whatever they call them. But uh, anyway, they looked good. They looked super menacing from up in the clouds. And uh, that ambiance, like I said, the ambiance not only was the ambiance of the weather, but also the shots that we got of the uh, of the facility. I guess it's Topoca City, you know, Camino cloning facility, whatever. Or is that the whole thing? The city? I don't know. Maybe they they destroyed an entire city. It's very possible. Anyway, um, yeah, that that was all super interesting to see. Like it was very. It felt very. It felt like you were supposed to feel emotional looking at it. Um, but it also felt like, ooh, there's something going on here. So it did invoke the emotion, or evoke, I should say, the emotion. But it also felt kind of like, oh, these shots are hanging here because you're supposed to be feeling something. And that was a little off for me. But overall, uh, like I said, the ambiance of, of the weather and everything else going on was good. Like even going down uh, towards the secret lab and stuff where um, Omega's really upset. It almost, yeah, it, it was really good. <laughs> really well done. Uh, let's see the next thing. So going into the deep stuff, the big reveal uh, outs crosshair in a different or puts crosshair in a different context. I agree it does. I'd speculated if you'd been listening to my analyses of Bad Batch all along that he had his chip removed and I think he had it removed after it had been amplified, which is a little silly that he would have gotten it amplified um, and then followed orders so well and then it would have had it removed. And I'm talking about after he kills the villagers. Uh, he orders his crew to kill uh, Saw Gerrera's villagers or the, the bystanders when they were looking for Saw Gerrera's group. Anyway, he gets up off the medical table and he's sitting there and he looks you know very moody like he's thinking or whatever. And I think that's when he got the uh, the chip removed. Anyway, um, yeah, I'd kind of called it all along. But at the same time, maybe he was lied to that his chip was removed and we're going to find out it's a double-double cross or double-double secret um, with grilled onions. Uh, that he thought it was removed, but it wasn't actually. I don't know. That would be kind of a cheap move because that would justify his actions, uh, or rather that would excuse his actions and allow him to be more more easily redeemed 
like at the end of this episode or the final episode of season one or maybe even in the beginning of season two we'll see what happens with that uh, let's see speculation season two will be rebranded as the good batch they'll have new armor and casual looks or there will be new armor and new casual looks for all that's what I'm predicting uh, question what does it mean that Hunter refused to kill Crosshair what do you think that means? I give this episode a 4 out of 5. I thought it was really good. Uh, I liked all the action. I liked a lot of the emotional stuff going on. Some of it was a little off. Some of it rang a little hollow, maybe. But overall, it was still really good, and I really enjoyed the action, and uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. So, what does it mean that Hunter refused to kill Crosshair? <sighs> well, it's more of a question for you to answer, but I think it means that maybe Hunter lacks... <laughs> Uh, Hunter lacks something that he needs, I guess, the killer instinct that you really need. Um, and I would like to think, uh, I'll kind of twist this answer instead. Uh, I think that if it was Hunter who'd gone evil or who had been uh, taken over and Crosshair had fully remained in control of himself and made Hunter's choice where he didn't want to kill, you know, needlessly for the Empire, excuse me, um, that Crosshair would have been able to kill Hunter if Hunter had been chipped and taken over by, by that. So... Uh, I think it's kind of interesting. I almost think it would have been more interesting to put Crosshair in that position because he does, he's a very good lead character as far as being able to leave a squad, lead a squad rather, and if he had to uh, have Omega around and she kind of um, chip, you know, rubbed off on him and, and uh, ended up redeeming his character a little bit, that could have been a little more interesting because uh, Hunter just seems like a good guy anyway, and... Uh, Maybe that would have been a more interesting way for them to go. But anyway, that's that's not relevant for now because you can't go back. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed this. Check out my growing collections of analysis, art, and fiction. The bottom of the show notes might just feature a design relevant to the topic at hand. Click around and find out. You can also visit mjmunoz.com slash support to see my latest designs and more. I welcome all forms of critique to improve my craft, so don't hold back any comments you have for me. I leave you with peace and blessings. This is MJ signing out.